Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. See where he comes, so please you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. And would thou wert so happy by thy stay to hear the truth. Short. In love. Out. Of love? Out of her favor where I am in love. Oh, me, what fray was here? Yet tell me not, I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create? This love feel I that, that feel no love in this. Tell me in sadness, who is that you love? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I ain't so near when I suppose to love. <laughs> a right good markman, and she's fair I love. A right fair mark, fair cause, as soon as hit. Uh, well, in that hit, you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity well armed. From love's weak childish bow, she lives unharmed. Then she hath sworn she will live chaste. She hath, and in that sparing makes a huge waste. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh, and teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Show me a mistress that is a passing fair. Oh, what doth her beauty serve? But as a note where I may read who passed that passing fair. Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine, or else die in debt. But Montague is bound, as well as I, in penalty like, and tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. No, for all reckoning are you both, and pity tis you live at odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying o'er what I have said before. My child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. But two more summers, wither in their pride, ere we may think her right to be a bride. Younger than she, our happy mother's maid. Too soon marred, oh, though so early made. The earth has swallowed all my hopes, but she, that she is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her gentle parents, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part, and she agree within her scope of choice. Lies my consent, and fair according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest, such as I love. And you? Among the store, one more most welcome makes my number more. Come, go with me. Go, Sirrah. Trudge about through fair Verona and find those persons out whose names are written there. And to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, find them out whose names are written here. Uh, see. No. Uh, uh, oh, I must to the learned. Ooh, in good time. Why, Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my mm -hmm. food, whipped mm -hmm. and tormented. Mm -hmm. Good evening, good fellow. A god, be good then, sir, I pray you. Can you read? I? If I know the letters and the language. Oh, ye say honestly, rest you merry. Stay, fellow, I can read. Oh! <laughs> <sighs> Signor Martino and his wife and daughter, ah. Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces. Ah, Mercutio and his brother Valentine. My uncle Capulet's wife and daughters. My fair niece Rosaline and Livia! 
uh, Senor Valencia and his cousins Tibble, Lucia, and the lively Helena. A fair assembly of whither should they come? Oh, to supper! To our house! Whose house? My master. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. Oh, now I'll tell you this without asking. My master is the great, rich Capulet, and if you be not of the house of Montague, <laughs> Pray you come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. At this same ancient feast of Capulet sucks the fair Rosaline, whom thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither and with unattainted eye compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. Where's this girl? What to me? How now? Who calls? Your mother! Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. <laughs> Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me. Thou hear our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter is of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. She's not fourteen. I of my teen, and yet to my teen be it spoken, I have but four. <laughs> she is not fourteen. How long is it now to last time? A fortnight and odd days. Even or odd of all days of the year, come Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. But as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. That shall she marry, I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake now, eleven years, and she was weaned. I never shall forget it. Of all the days of the year, upon that day, Jade, quoth the dove house, t'was no need, I trow, to bid me trudge. <laughs> and since that time, it is eleven years, for then she could stand high low. Nay, by the road, she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before she broke her brow, and my husband, God be with his soul, he was a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backward, when thou hast more wit, wilt thou not do? <laughs> and my all blessed saints, the pretty fool, <laughs> she smiled and said, about. I warrant, and I should live a thousand years, I never shall forget it. Wilt thou not, Jewel, quoth he? And the pretty fool, the cheeky smile, and said, Aye! Enough of this, I pray thee, hold thy peace. And stop thou too, I pray thee, nurse, thy eyes. Peace I have done. Ah, oh, God mark thee to his grace. Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I should live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Mary, that Mary is this very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, Dr. Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. An honor? Were not I thine only nurse, I would say that thou hast sucked wisdom from thy teeth. Well, Think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. <gasps> a lady, a man, such a man is all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona, summer hath not such a flower. Nay, hey, he's a flower. In faith, very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris's face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. No less? Nay, bigger. Women grow by men. <laughs> Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris's love? I'll look to like if looking liking mood. But no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Madam, the guests to come, 
supper served up, you called, my young lady asked for, the nurse cursed in the pantry, and everything in extremity. I must hence to wait. I beseech you, follow straight. We follow thee, Juliet, the county's dead. Go, girl, seek happy nights to happy days. <laughs> <laughs> I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dead! <laughs> Not I, believe me. I have a soul of lead, so stakes me to the ground, I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above the common bounds. <laughs> Under love's heavy burden do I sink. <laughs> and to sink in it should you burden love. Too great oppression for a tender thing. Oh, it's love, a tender thing. It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. <laughs> Think you on that? Come, knock and enter, and no sooner in than every man but take him to his leg. Come, you burn daylight, hope. Nay, hey, that's not so. I mean, sir, in delay. We waste our lights in vain like lamps by day. And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Why may one ask? I dreamed a dream tonight. Oh, and so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. In bed, asleep, where they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife and comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman. <laughs> Drawn with a team of little atomies athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. And in this state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains and then they dream of love. Or courtiers' knees who dream on curtsies straight. Or lawyers' fingers who straight dream on feet. Sometimes she driveth over a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches, ambuscados, Spanish blades of hells, five fathom deep, uh -huh. and then anon drums in his ear, at which he stops and wakes, and being thus right, it swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. <laughs> this is that very man that plants the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf locks and foul sluttish hairs which once untangled much misfortune bows. This is the hag when maids lie on their backs that presses them and loves them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is peace! Peace, Mercutio, peace, thou talks of nothing. True. <laughs> These are but the children of an idle brain, the thought of nothing but vain facts. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence, and hanging the star shall bitterly begin his fearful dates with this night's revels, and expire the term of a despised life, close within my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. <laughs> Steer, jog my course, direct my sails. Oh, oh unless he gets away. Ah, 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 welcome, gentlemen! Ladies that have their toes unplagued with corns will walk about with you. <laughs> Aha, my mistresses, which of you all will now deny to dance? She that makes dainty, she I'll swear hath corns. <laughs> Do I come near you now? Uh, welcome! I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as would please. <laughs> tis gone. Tis gone. Tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen! Come, musicians, play! Oh, what lady is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I'll say not, sir. She doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel beneath the appear. Beauty too rich for use for earth to hear. To hit my heart, love till now. For swear it's sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. Despite his boy 
should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What dares this slave come hither with an antic face to fleer and scorn an office to beneath? Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Wait, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you, sir? My uncle, this be a Montague, our foe, a villain that is in a come in spite to scorn an office. This night. Young Romeo, is it? To see that villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cause, little alone. He bears him like a goodly gentleman. And to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well governed youth. I would not, for the wealth of all the town here in my house, do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, to which if thou respect, show our fair presence! <laughs> Seeming semblance for a beast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. Ah. What, Goodman boy? I say he shall. My the master here are you. Go to. You'll endure him. God shall mend my soul. You make a mutiny among my guests. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Oh, tis ah. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. <laughs> this trick may chance to scathe you. I know what. You must contrary me. You're on a pring, Cox. Go. Be quiet, or I'll make you quiet. <laughs> I will withdraw, but this intrusion sounding seeming sweet. Convert to bitter gall. <laughs> if I profane with my unworthy hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. Uh, my lips to blushing pilgrims already stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hands too much. Which merrily devotion shows the less. For The more is my unrest. 
to their adjacent lie. <laughs> the humorous night. Blind is his love, uh, and that's befits the dark. If love be blind, love can I hit the mark. Romeo! Good night! Out to my truckle bed, this, this field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Go! Shall we go? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun! <laughs> oh, arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon who was already sick and pale with grief. Thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her best delivery is but sick and green, and under fools do wear it. Cast it off! It is my lady. It is my love! Oh, that she knew she were! <laughs> As she speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Ah, uh, her eyes discourse. I will answer it. Oh, I am too bold. <laughs> Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heavens having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres to their return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheeks would shame those stars as daylight not the lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand that I might touch that cheek. Ah, indeed. Oh, she speaks. Oh, speak again, great angel. For thou art as glorious as thy being were my head, as the wing and messenger of heaven, and as the wife of her swallowing eye, the morning that falls back to gaze on him when he bestrides the lazy king's clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. Stony lips. 
limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do that dares love's attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eyes than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their sight. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued one king of thy love. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would have made him blush to paint my cheek for that which thou hadst heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form, fain, fain deny what I have spoke. Possibly well compliment. Dost thou love me? Oh, I, I do. know thou wilt say I, and I will take a word. Yet, swears thou mayst prove false. Of lovers' perjuries, they say Jove laughs. Oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Oh, if Lord, I if thou thinkst I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay. So thou wilt woo. Substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, then good night and sleep. If that thy bent of love be honorable, the purpose merit. It. Send me word tomorrow by one that hath procured to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform thy right. And all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. I come and on! If thou leaves not well, I do beseech thee. Leave me to my grief. Tomorrow I will send. So thrive my 
so... A thousand times! Good night! A thousand times the worst to what thy light! Love goes towards love as schoolboys from their books. But love from love? Towards school with heavy looks. <laughs> Like softest music to attend the years. Romeo. Oh, my sweet. At the walk tomorrow shall I send you to me? Uh, at the hour of night. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Uh, let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy <coughs> Still stay to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home but this. It was almost morning I would have thee gone, and yet no further than a wanton bird who lets it pluck a little from her hand like a poor prisoner in his twisted guise. And with so glad and puts it back again, so loving, jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. So would I. Sleep in peace, so oh sweet to rest. Hence will I to my ghostly father tell. His help the crave, oh my dear hap to tell. Grey eyed morn smiles on frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. Now ere the sun advances burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry. I must have filled this old basket of ours with baleful weeds and precious juice of flowers. Many for many virtues excellent, but none for some and yet all different. Oh, how great is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. For not so vile that on the earth doth live, but to the earth some special good doth give. Within the infant rind of this sweet flower, Poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelt, for that part cheers each part, being tasted, stays all senses with the heart. Two such opposed kings and captain still in man, as well as herbs, grace, and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Good morning, Father! Benedicite! What early tongue so sweet saluted me! Ah, young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bring a bow to thy bed. Or if not, then here I hit it right. A oh, Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true, the sweeter rest was mine. Oh, God, pardon sin. Is that with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father, no. I forgot that name and that name's woe. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee ere thou ask me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, when a sudden one hath wounded me. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on her, so hers is set on mine, and all combined, save but the must combine with holy marriage. When and where and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of vow. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis, what a change is here. This <laughs> Rosaline that thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken. Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Thou trust me all for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. We pray thee, chide not. 
She whom I love now doth grace for grace, and love for love allow the other did not so. Oh, she knew well thy love to read by Rome to could not spell. But come, young waverer, come go with me. In one respect I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Oh, let us hence! I stand on some half! Wisely and slow! They stumble that run fast. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen. Amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. And do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death do what he dare. It is enough that I will not call her mine. These violent delights have violent tints, and in their triumph die like fire and powder, but as they kiss consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in his own deliciousness, and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore, love moderately. Long loved of so. Too swift arrives as tardy is too slow. Ah, here comes the lady. Oh, so light of foot will ne'er wear out the everlasting flit. A lover may bestride the gossamer, the idols in the wanton summer air, and yet not fall. So light is vanity. Good even to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him as is his thanks too much. Ah, uh, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blaze in it, and sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both perceive in either by this dear encounter. Sleep more rich in not with any words, the brands of his substance and are but beggars that can count their worth. My true love has grown to such excess. I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. And we will make sure work, for by your leaves you shall not stay alone, till Holy Church incorporate two in one. <laughs> Mary, to 
is enough! Uh, courage, man! The hurt cannot be much! No! Tis not so deep as the well! No, not so wide as the church top! But tis enough! Do so! Ask for me tomorrow! And you shall find me a grave man! <laughs>
vile beginners of this fray. The noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. It was Tybalt, nice. slain by young Romeo that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Tybalt, my cousin, oh, my brother's child. <laughs> Bloody fray. The enemy's thrust from Tybalt took the life of Stout Mercutio, and then Tybalt fled, but by a mic come back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge in Two and they go like lightning, for mm. ere I could draw to part them with Stout Tybalt's slave. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly? Mice. This is the truth, or let the folio die! She is a kinsman to the Montague! Affection makes her false! She speaks not Mercutio, who else the price of his dead blood doth owe? Not Romeo, Prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end. The life of Tybalt! No! And for that offence, immediately do we exile him hence. I have an interest in your heart's proceedings. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses, nor tears, nor prayers shall purchase out of uses. Therefore, you stun! Let Romeo hint while he can, else if he be found, that hour is his last. Now bear hence these bodies and attend our will. Mercy, but murders, pardoning those who kill! Romeo, come forth, come forth, thou fearful man. Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow and grief acquaintance in my hand that I ain't know not? A gentle judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Be merciful, say death. For exile hath more terror and is look much more than death. Do not say banishment. Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Hence banish it is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. Then banish it is death mistermed. Calling death banishment, thou cutst my head off with a golden axe, and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. O oh, deadly sin, O oh, rude unthankfulness, thy fault our law caused death, but the kind prince, taking thy part, hath rushed aside the law and turned that blackboard death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. Tis torture, not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing lives here in heaven and may look on a bird. Romeo may not. He is banished. Sayst thou yet that exile is not death? Hast thou no poison mixed, no sharp brown knife, no sudden need of death, though ne'er so mean, but banish it to kill me? Banish it! Thou fond madman, hear me to speak a word! Oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment! I'll give thee armor to keep off that word, and burst thee sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished! Yet banish it! Hang up philosophy! Unless philosophy can make a Juliet display to town, reverse a prince's doom, it helps not, it prevails not, talk no more. Oh, then I see that the madmen have no ears. How should they when that wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. Were thou as young as I, Juliet, thy love, and thou art but married, a tumult murderer, doting like thee, and like thee, banishing. 
Then might thou speak. Then might thou tear thy hair and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Arise, what knocks? Good Romeo, hide thyself. Not I. Unless the breath of hearts and groans mist life be fold me from the search of eyes. Hark how they knock! Who's there? Romeo, arise! That will be taken! Stay a while! Stand up! What do I study by and by? God's will, what simpleness is this? I come, I come! Who not so hard? What's come you? What's your will? Let me come in if you have done my errand! <clears throat> I come from Lady Juliet! Welcome then! There on the ground with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my mistress's case. Just as in her case. Even so lies she blubbering and weeping. Weeping and blubbering. Stand up. Stand up. Stand and you be a man. For Juliet's sake. For her sake. Rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an owner? Ah, oh, sir. Ah, oh, sir. That's the end of all. Makes up, Juliet. How is it with her? Doth she not think me an old murderer now that I have stained the childhood of her joy with blood removed but little from her own? Where is she? And how doth she? What says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? She says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and then falls on her bed, and then starts up, and then Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then. As if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her. Oh, tell me, Friar, tell me, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me that I may set an inflammation. Hold thy desperate hand. Art thou a man? Thy form cries out, thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. Thou hast amazed me. By my order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Would thou slay thyself? And slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned and hate upon thyself? Why rouse thou against thy birth, the heaven and earth? What rouse thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive, for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead. There art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee, but thou slewest Tybalt. There art thou happy too. The law the threatened death becomes thy friend and turns into exile. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings lights up upon your back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. But like a misbehaved and sullen witch, thou pallest against thy fortune and thy love. Take heed, take heed for such die miserable. <laughs> Go, give me to thy love as was decreed. Ascend her chamber, hence and comfort her. But look thou stay not to the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wouldst forth in lamentation. Go before nurse. Commend me to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes the map done too. Romeo is coming. Oh, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is! My lord, I will tell my lady that you will come. Uh, do so, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Sir, a ring she bid me give you, sir. Hide you make haste, for it grows very late. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence, good night. And here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguised from hence, sojourn of Mantua. I'll find out your man, and he shall signify from time to time every good hap to you in the chat is here. Give me the hand. Tis late. Farewell. Good night. But that a joy past joy calls out on me. It were a grief, so grief to part with me. Farewell. Things have fallen out, sir. So unluckily that we have had no time to move, my daughter. 
Look you, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly, and so did I. <coughs> well, we were born to die. Tis very late, she'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to rule. Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and to know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she is viewed up to her heavens. <coughs> To Paris! I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled by me in all respects. Nay, more, I doubt it not. Wife! Go you to her, ere you go to bed, and acquaint her here of my son Paris' love. <laughs> and bid her mark you me. Um, Wednesday next? What sort of day is this? Monday, my lord. Monday! <laughs> well. Wednesday is too soon. A Thursday it'll be. A Thursday, tell her she shall be married to this noble Earl. Will we be ready? Do you like this haste? We'll keep no great ado, a friend or two. For, hark you, Tybalt being slain so late it may be thought we held him carelessly, being our kinsman, if we rebel much. Therefore, we'll have some half a dozen friends in their end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Whoa! Thursday, Beers. Go you to Juliet. Go prepare her against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord! Lights to my chamber! Oh. Before me, it is so very, very late. You may call it early line, Bob. Good night. Oh, 
Methinks I see thee now, thou art below, as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails, or thou lookst Trust me, love. In my eyes, so do you. Dry sorrow brings so blood. But you. Chop logic, 
what is this? Proud and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud, Mistress Minion, you thank me, no thanking, so proud me, no proud, but fiddling with my joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I'll drag thee on a hurdle thither. Out, you bring sickness carrion, out you baggage, you tower face. Why, why, what are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees, for me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage, <laughs> disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, give thee to church on Thursday, or never after look me in the face. To speak not, reply not, do not answer me, my fingers itch. Wife, we scarce of us blessed that God had lent us but his only child, but now I see this one is one too much. And that we have a, a curse in having her! Oh, do you greet, sickness carrion? Oh, oh, you're not guilty! You are to blame, my lord! To rate her so, God bless her! And why, my lady wisdom? Hold your tongue, good prudence! Smatter with your gossips! Go! I speak no treason! Oh, God, ye good dead! May not one speak? Peace, you mumbling fool! Of your gravity, you are gossip's bull, for here we need it not. You are too hot! Of oh, God's bread, it makes me mad! Day, night, work, play, alone, in company, still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, of fair estates, youthful and nobly leaned, stuffed, as they say, with honourable parts, proportioned as one's thoughts would wish a man! And now to have a wretched, puling fool, a whining mammoth, and her fortune's tender to answer, I cannot wed. I'm too young. I pray you, pardon me. But as you will not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look on, trust to it. I do not use to jest. Thursday is near, lay hand on heart advice, and you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not, hang, beg, soft, die in the streets, for by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trusted bethink you, I'm not being forsworn. Is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? Living 
my father, to the Lord's cell, to make confession and to be involved. Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation! Sir, the time is very short. My father, Capulet, will have it so, and I am nothing slow, just like his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the cause, I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have a little talk to love. The Venus smiles not in the house of tears. Now, so her father counts it dangerous that she not give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears. <laughs> now do you know the reason of this hate? I would I knew not why it should be slow. Oh, look, sir, here comes the lady towards my cell. Happily met, my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, and I may be a wife. And that may be, must be, love, on Thursday next. That must be, shall be. That's a certain text. <laughs> Come you to make confession to this father? To answer that, I should confess to you. Are you at leisure, holy father, now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? Uh, my leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. <laughs> Juliet, on Thursday, early will I rouse thee. Until then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Mwah. Oh, shut the door! And when thou hast done so, come wait with me. Past cure, past hope, past help. Ah, oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it. On Thursday next be married to this county. Oh, tell me not, Friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. Give me present counsel, or behold. And me, this bloody knife shall play a part of our retreat that to which the commission of thy years and art could do no issue of true honor bring. Be not so long to speak, I long to die of what thou speakest, be not of remedy. Old daughter, I do spy a kind of hope. If rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then it is likely thou shalt undertake a thing like death to try to wear the shame. And if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of any tower, or walk in thievish ways, or bid me lurk where serpents are, chain me with roaring bears, or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with a dead man in his shroud. Things that to hear them told have made me tremble. And I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to Hold my then. sweet love. Go home, be married. Give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night would that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, being in a bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou off. And presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor. For no pulse shall keep a state of progress for surcease. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. And in this borrowed likeness of struck death, thou shalt continue for two and forty hours. And then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. Then, as the manner of our country is, and thy best robes uncovered on the bier, and thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the cabinets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt await, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift. And hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking. And that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua, and this shall free thee from this present shame. If no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valor in the acting it. Give me, give me, tell me not of fear. Hold, 
and you gone, be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I will send the friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me <clears throat> strength, and strength shall help the Lord. Farewell, good father. We shall be much unfurnished for this time. What, is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? Aye, forsooth. Well, he may chance to do some good on her. A peevish self will harlotry this is. Here she comes now, from strict with merry look. How, 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 Hildy? Her headstrong. Where have you been getting? Oh, where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests, and am enjoined by holy lords to fall prostrate here and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you, henceforward I am ever ruled by you. Well, I am glad on <laughs> This is well, stand up. This is as it should be. This reverend, holy father, all our whole city is much bound to him. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you see fit to furnish me tomorrow? No, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. We shall be short in our provisions. It's now near night. Tush, I will stir about, and all will be well. I warrant thee, wife. Go you to Julia. Help to deck up her. I'll not to bed tonight. I'll walk myself to County Paris to prepare him up against tomorrow. My heart is wondrous light since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Tibble's 
yet but green earth lies festering in his shroud, where, as they say, at some hours of the night, spirits resort. Alack, alack, it is not light that I so early waking hot with loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth that living mortals hearing them run mad. Oh, if I wake, will I not be destroyed? Part in this fair maid. 
now heaven hath all, and all the better it is for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death, but heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion, but towards your heaven she should be advanced, and we be now see she is advanced above the clouds as high as heaven itself. Oh, in this love you love your child so ill that you run mad, seeing that she is well. She's not well married that lives very long, but she's best married that dies very young. Dry up your tears, and stick your rose very on the fair course, and as the custom is in all her best array, bear her to church. For the fond nature bids us all lament, Yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. All things that we ordain at festival turn from their office to black funeral. Our solemn hymns to solemn doges change. Our bridal flowers serve for buried corpse. And all things change them to the contrary. Sir, go you in. And madam, go with them. And go, Sir Paris. Everyone prepared to follow this fair course unto her grave. Possessed one but love's shadow, so rich in joy. Ah, my faithful manservant brings me a post. And though I want letters from the friar too, what of it? Tis of no concern just now. Here be news from Verona that tells me how doth my lady, is my father well, how fares my Juliet. That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Juliet's well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal parts with angels lives. I saw her laid low, in her kindred's fault. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my duty, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Well, Juliet, I'll lie with thee tonight. Put this in any liquid thing you will and drink it off. And if you had the strength of 20 men, it would dispatch you straight. Come, cordial and not poison, go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I eat thee. I enforce thy rotten jaws to open, and in despite, 
I'll cram thee with more food. This is a banished haughty Montague, who murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed that the fair creature died. And he has come to do some villainous shame to the dead body. I will apprehend him. Stop by unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? <laughs> Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey, and go with me, for thou must die. I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. Good gentle friend, tempt not to desperate man. Fly hence and leave thee. Oh, think upon these gone. Let them affright thee. I beseech thee, friend, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone! By heaven, I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not. Be gone. Live and hereafter say, a madman's mercy bade thee run away. I do defy thy combination and apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. Stains the stony entrance of the sepulchre. 
What mean these masterless and gory swords to life discolored by this place of peace? Romeo! Who pale? Who else? What? In Paris too? It's steeped in blood? Oh, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance! The lady service! I hear some noise. Lady, come from this nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. A greater power that we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead. And Paris too, come. I shall dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question for the watch is coming. Come, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Don't get me hence, for I will not away. <laughs> for a while till we can clear these ambiguities. I am the greatest, able to do least, yet most suspected as this time and place doth make against me of this direful murder. And here I stand, both to impeach and purge myself condemned and myself excused. Hey, say it! What's what thou dost know of this? Romeo, their dead, was husband to their Juliet. And she, their dead, was Romeo's faithful wife. I married them. At their stolen marriage day, it was Temple Stoom's day, whose untimely death banished the new made bridegroom from the city. For whom, and not for Temple Juliet Pine, you, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed and would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then comes she to me, and with wild looks bid me devise some means to rid her of this second marriage, or in my cell there would she kill herself. The gave by her. So tutored by my heart to sleeping potion in the guise of death, till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her awakening, here on time to lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes, and I entreated her come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience. And she, too desperate, would not go with me. 
but as it seems to violence on herself. All this I know, and to her marriage the nurse is privy. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds ways to kill your joys with love. <laughs> And I, for winking at your discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. <laughs> All are punished. Oh, Brother Montague, <laughs> give me thy hand. <laughs> this is my daughter's jointure, and no more can I demand. But I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold. That while Verona by that name is known, there shall be no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As shall Romeo's by his ladies lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. A gloomy peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show its head. Go hence. To talk more of these sad things. Some will be pardoned and some punished. But never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her own.